Rick Young wears with my church. Do your stuff. All right. <laughs> We begin our service with the Military Honor Guard presentation.
May be seated.
service continues as a piano solo by the Barbara Penn. <laughs> Now the service continues with the opening sentences. If you'd like to follow it, it's on page 491 in the red prayer books under the chairs in your pews, or you can just listen, page 491, which is the service of burial in the Episcopal prayer book. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. <clears throat> Whoever has faith in me, they shall have life. Even though he die, and everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last day he will stand upon the earth, and after my awakening he will rise me up, and in my body I shall see God, I myself shall see, and my eyes shall behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. None of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Let us pray. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of this your servant, Leander. Grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament and Epistle lesson will be written, read by uh, Mr. Rich Ferrick, who uh, representing uh, the Andrews Church, the St. Andrews in Edith.
This is uh, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then we have a New Testament from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end, and for tongues, they shall cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know now only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will be at an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, love, and hope abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Thanks to God. Amen. Psalm chosen for today is Psalm 23, the beloved shepherd psalm, and saying it in the traditional version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, that thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now we have a solo from Barbara Daniel.
Before giving my little homily, I'd like to uh, read a letter of appreciation that's been sent to the family of the uh, late Lieutenant Colonel Ian Joseph Robert Jr. And this is from uh, the Silo Baptist Church uh, in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. To the family of the late Colonel Leander Joseph Robert Jr., on behalf of the entire membership of Shadow Baptist Church in Trenton, New Jersey, we extend our deep and abiding sympathy on the passing of your loved one. We are sad because of the sting of death and uh, bow in humble submission to the will of God. However, we are joyful because we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Please know that our prayers and thoughts are with you. God, in his wisdom, never makes mistakes, uh, and through faith and prayer, he will sustain you and your loved ones through this most difficult period. May you find comfort in cherished memory, and may you find strength in companionship. Lieutenant Colonel Roberts will be missed, uh, but Know that he is a one step closer to eternity and the everlasting love of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. May the blessing of God abide with you today, tomorrow, and always. Your, yours in Christ, the Shire Baptist Church, and especially the Reverend Dr. Darrell L. Armstrong, the pastor. Amen. It's wonderful to have all these amens in the sermon. I'm not quite used to this. <laughs> So if you say an amen while I'm speaking, I won't be offended, I'll be uh, delighted. <laughs> As it now find that these three, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I think about the characteristics, the quality that I most admired in Leander, who was uh, to me, a great friend. He befriended me from the moment I came to St. Andrews back in uh, 2009. Um, I'll never forget that occasion because it was just before Barack Obama was um, inaugurated and he preached the sermon that very Sunday of that weekend and um, he brought a life-sized statue or cardboard <laughs> of Obama. Like, almost like there were three, four persons in the Trinity. But... Um, <laughs> Of his character of stepping out and doing when he went when something was heartfelt, and I loved it. The characteristics, and especially I remember in Meander, 
and I'll touch some of them. They're at the heart of the Christian faith, if you believe, and at the heart of the life he lived. First of all, faith. He had a lifelong Christian faith. He believed in God. He trusted uh, that the God who made him was the God who redeemed him, and now uh, he trusts that the God who receives him yeah, yes. into eternal life. And this faith kept him. And uh, it was uh, his constant stay and helped him to persevere in times of trouble and trial and hardship, not least in his work and some of the challenging things he had to do when he was in the military and even thereafter. And I thank God for Leander's faith. It often bolstered mine when I felt it was a bit faltering and uh, he would uh, come into the church and I felt... I, I, <laughs> the God was with him. And that made all of the difference. Yes. And then I think of his curiosity. I love this about him. One of our first, I, I found that I started up a Bible study when I first came to St. Andrews, and uh, that was in 09, and he started coming. And uh, the, the first Bible study, he said, he said, I got a question. You, know, you can just see him doing this. I, I got a question. And uh, so I said, uh oh. <laughs> I said, this son of man. What's all this about son of man? I don't understand. I don't think he understood after I gave the answer. <laughs> or when he asked it some years later and I gave sort of the same answer. And he shook his head and said, thank you. Um, but he was always asking questions. He was always trying to get to the bottom of things. You know, this, this was the end. Whether it was how to cook a gumbo even better than he'd already cooked it, or how to listen properly to somebody when they were saying something, and that uh, talking about something they'd been through, and how to be there uh, for people. Don't no asking questions. And in this, he followed Jesus. Uh, um, what should it profit a man if he gained the whole world or loses and forfeits his soul? Um, the Jesus was always asking questions. And often he didn't give the answer because he'd given you, you a brain to figure it out. And forever, uh, the end was asking questions. And I love that. And then there was a sense of humor. God, what a wicked sense of humor. Uh, any of you who've uh, had spent time with him will know this better than I do, but uh, I remember uh, one Sunday uh, uh, after church we were talking, just um, informally, and uh, he happened to mention Lord Buckley, and I said, who? <laughs> Lord Buckley, don't you know Lord Buckley? I don't suspect I have to introduce Lord Buckley to this crowd, but, um, and he introduced me, therefore, to um, a um, stand-up comedian in the 50s and 60s who was uh, a stunning presenter. Somebody referred to him as part royalty, part Dizzy Gillespie. And um, I, I had been in a seminary in New York, right there. But I never heard of um, Lord Buckley. It took coming to St. Andrews and meeting St. Uh, Leander uh, to be introduced to this wonderful humorous who told Bible studies in his fresh uh, and unhindered way. He refused to Jesus. Uh, he referred to Jesus as the Naz. And he referred to the Pharisees and some of the people who wanted to challenge Jesus as cool cats. You can take the story from there, probably you know it better than I do. Uh, but he, he had this wonderful sense of humor. And, uh, he always set me laughing at something he said. And then I want to circle his love because all of you who knew him knew that this was an outstanding quality in the Andrews life and person. Greater, greater love has no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friends and daily, weekly, monthly in his career he put his life on the line for others. And he loved his family, his friends, his community, his church. Uh, he was a man of love and and the way he manifested that, if I remember, if I, in more than once, he listened carefully to what others said. Jesus was the greatest listener who ever lived. One of the men walked and the two disciples were walking along on that road. Uh, uh, he, they said to him, are you the only visitor uh, in Jerusalem who has not uh, known about the things that have happened in these days? 
And Jesus said, what things? Of course, he knew better than anybody else that happened to him. But he asked the question the way the hand so often did, because he wanted to talk it out and think it out and share their sadness and disappointment and heartbreak. And only after they'd shared and poured out their hearts, then did he reveal to them, first of all, in the scriptures, and then in the breaking of the bread and in himself, that he had fulfilled all of the scriptures, Moses and all the prophets. But his love was shown in the way that he listened. And so did the And I trust that all of us, as we move forward in life, saddened now by the loss of our friend, but rejoicing that he is with Jesus in glory. I trust that all of us will become ourselves better listeners. We'll show the love of Christ by the way we care for others, listen to others, uh, hope for them, uh, pray for them, and lift them up to God. This is what Leander did. He, was a, he had a daily routine of prayer with the uh, mission of St. Clair, which is an Episcopal uh, website, and he introduced me to that as well. I could go on to say all the things he introduced me to me that I ought to have known about. Uh, but he, he, his rest, regular listening, his regular prayer, showed his love both for the Lord and for the Lord's servants. And I rejoice, as you do, that it was my privilege to know uh, Leander Joseph Roberts, Jr. Amen. 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 Uh, and now um, uh, we have a, uh, several remembrances uh, followed by a poem uh, representative of our congregation. So first of all, Mr. Luther Nolan. Well, I remember, I remember the first time I met Lee was at freshman orientation. And it was there that he called my attention and tried to show me the right way to go. I was not familiar with college at the time because I was the first to go to college from my family. Lee took me under his wing and introduced me, showed me around, made my stay at Tuskegee an important one. Later that semester, and I'm sorry, we were on a quarter system. Later that uh, spring quarter, we pledged in a fraternity, Lambda Epsilon Psi of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. There, our next year, it was 13 of us who crossed and became members of the fraternity. Lee kept us together because without him, I doubt if we would have been able to survive because our week, the initiation week, was not a week because 14 days is not a week. <laughs> That's how long we were there. 14 days. Well, later on, each of us, uh, me and I at least, uh, joined our OTC. Tuskegee, of course, was a land grant college at the time. And we all had to, at least first and second year, be in the uh, ROTC program. As we continued our study, I and Lee managed to uh, be commissioned at graduation. In the fraternity, there were 13 of us, and we call ourselves the Mighty 13. Lee kept us going, and even now, uh, for those that I know are still alive, 
Lee kept in touch with him. He would let us know where everyone was. It was that way, kept in touch by going to Tuskegee, attending homecoming games, and other events that we were a part of. Lee was the middleman, more or less. He kept all of, us in, all of us informed about what was going on. After I reported for active duty for the military, uh, I managed to see Lee twice while I was on active duty at, uh, for the Air Force. He visited us twice at wright Patterson Air Force Base. Upon retiring from the military, um, I managed to move to McClellan as my last duty station, where I retired. And in 1976, Lee introduced me to uh, frat brothers who were here in Sacramento. It just so happened that there were three of us in the chapter, which was chartered that year. That was Randolph Cook, myself, and Lee. I can say that Lee was always looking out for all of us, even today. Thank you. Today I am grateful to be part of celebrating the incredible life of Lee Roberts. My dear friend and fraternity brother, to Shirley, Dr. Lee and the family, you have my deepest condolences and love for family. Your husband, father, teacher, brought so much love to you and everyone that knew him. We are going to miss him but in spirit will continue all of us. Shirley, your incredible partnership inspires so many of us to love me for all of his humanitarian efforts. Lee was a great cook and invited friends to celebrate every New Year's Eve with a full course dinner. He was a Tuskegee Airman, a navigator in the Air Force, and traveled around the world protecting the shores of the United States. Lee was an avid teacher and loved to attend sporting events at his beloved school, Grant High School. We shared many stories together. My life will not be the same without me. Lee, we thank you for your service to this country and you dedicated your life to mankind, creating an element of service to all. Shirley, my heart is with you. May I offer comfort to you and Leanne during these memories of love and spirit. Rest in peace, my fraternity brother. Sleep on. Thank you. Good afternoon. Lee was my uh, brother in law. Taught me how to cook. <laughs> we had competitions on a regular basis in our kitchen, and there were always discussions that sometimes resulted in arguments as who were actually the best um, at the pot in the kitchen. Um, 
the film is that something to worry about the music and I'm going to phrase it the way, the way Lee would have phrased it. He would have said, I've never been to heaven, but I kind of like the music. <laughs> <laughs> and you can count on him putting his twist on just about everything, including uh, at the end of the day, if there was any conversation about who was actually in charge, he always announced that he was king of the castle. And then closer to the evening, my big sister Shorty would say, yeah, we like to think that. <laughs> and I'm sure that uh, Leanne and Shorty both kept Lee in line, and in his mind, he kept them in line. So with that being said, I'm going to tell you one other thing that I heard, and it says, love it forever. I think you said that, and that's the way. I feel about my brother. Thank you. Uh, good day, everyone. Charlie, Dr. Leanne, Lauren, family and friends. It's my privilege and honor to be here today to recognize my uncle, Leander J. J. Roberts, Jr. I should say Lieutenant Colonel Roberts. I told Leanne this the day, excuse me, the day my uncle passed away. Everything that I am right now is because of him. What does that mean? Well, I have a lot of initials before my name. A lot of initials after my name. One of those initials is Kirk. I'm retired from the Air Force. The reason I joined the Air Force is because of my uncle. My uncle came to me one day and in only the way he could. He said, hey, uh, you need to do something to help your parents. Now, hopefully my mother and the rest of our family can see us via the streaming. Uh, before I go too much further, I want to make sure that you understand I'm representing uh, the family from New Jersey. My father is uh, my uncle Lee's sister, his oldest sister. And uh, fortunately, my wife, Bobby, my sister Debbie, we were able to be here for this memorial service. Amen. But again, my uncle came to me and he said uh, at the time, because one of my sisters was preparing to go, uh, or actually was already in law school, another sister in college, we still had one more. He said, perhaps you could do something uh, for yourself uh, as well as for your family and for your country. Let me make sure that I don't leave that part out. That was the most important thing. I won't, I won't uh, take too much more of your time, but I just want you to ponder something and how things work together and how there's always a plan. If you read in the obituary the number of aircraft that my uncle flew, there are two of those aircraft that I want to call out. The C-141 and the C-130. Now, if you don't believe there's a plan, perhaps you will after what I'm about to say. The C-141 was made in Marietta, Georgia by a company called Lockheed. The C-130 initially was made in Marietta, Georgia by a company called Lockheed. The C-130 continues to be made in Marietta, Georgia by a company called Lockheed Martin. For the last, excuse me, my first flight in the Air Force was at my home in a C-141 aircraft. Most of my flight in the Air Force was in a C-130 aircraft. My current job is I am the medical director at the Lockheed Martin plant in Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> Again, it's my honor, it's my privilege to, to be here today to have a few minutes to speak. Thank you very much.
Now, after running the foundation, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Terry Netters, and Lee Roberts was my uncle. And uh, it's hard for me to like cry or feel sad today because uh, my uncle always made me laugh. So uh, I just want to share a couple of memories. Um, anybody that knows me though that I'm a very sensitive person, very private, and I don't like to share memories. But I'll share this today because I want to honor my uncle. And the first memory, I think I was like 12 years old. And we were in Elk Grove at my parents' house. They're having like a party. I was in sixth grade and I had just gotten dumped for the first time. And my uncle saw me kind of moping around the corner and he says to me, he says, it's right, what's wrong? And I said, ah, you know, I just got dumped. And he said, man, <laughs> face like that, you better go find you a box. <laughs> so I said, Uncle Lee, what are you talking about? And we just kind of had a laugh and, you know, that was it. So fast forward to 2016, uh, I had just gotten married. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped the memory. Fast forward to college, I think I was like 21 or 22. And uh, my mom was having a Mary Kay party, you know, one of those parties where you saw makeup. And we had a bunch of our family over, even my beloved Aunt Velma was there. And uh, a lot of you here were there too. And my uncle Lee walks up to me and I had my girlfriend with me at the time and says, who is this young lady? And I said, Oh, this is my girlfriend, Uncle Lee. And he said to me, he said, I see you found you a fox. <laughs> and he said it right in front of me and my girlfriend. So I was so embarrassed. Um, but you know, it was funny. And we just kind of had a laugh. And, uh, you know, we began to kind of talk about Japan because I spent three years living there. And my Uncle Lee was at the Sase Base. In fact, this, I wear this hat today because he told me he liked this hat. And I told him I actually bought it at, the, uh, at a store in Sase where the base piece was at. So, um, so yeah, fast forward now to 2016 and I had just gotten married and my uncle Lee walks up to me with a smirk on his face and he says, I see you married that box. <laughs> he said, that's the one, isn't it? I said, yeah, 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 that's the same one, Uncle Lee. Thank you, thank you. And he's like, no, 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 you can thank me later. So fast forward to 2021, 2022, uh, Leanne and Lauren's wedding and I saw my Uncle Lee again this time, for the first time in a long time. And, but this time it was very different. When I walked up to him, he said, I'm really cold. So I took my jacket off and I put it on him. He already had two jackets. He had like an oxygen tank and he couldn't breathe well. And I was helping him to the car, you know, to, to go to the ceremony. And it was just he and I for about five minutes in the car. And I said, so Uncle Lee, you know, how are you doing? I was kind of talking like I had always talked. But my Uncle Lee said something to me that kind of shocked me. He said, ah, oh, young man, tell me your name again. And it hurt, you know, it was, it was like, oh man, at that point I kind of realized like my Uncle Lee's memory, I had kind of slipped out of it. So I was feeling sad and uh, I said, it's Teray, Uncle Lee, it's Teray. You remember um, Beverly and Tyrone's son? He said, oh, Malik. And I said, no. <laughs> That's my older brother, but you're close. And we kind of sat there in silence for a minute. And this next memory is the one that is very special to me and that I never told anybody and I never planned to. So I was kind of sitting there for about a minute in silence watching my Uncle Lee like struggling to breathe. And he says to me, he says, takes one big deep breath. And he says, Trey. I say, yeah, Uncle Lee. And he said, you still married to that fox? <laughs> Another deep breath, and that was kind of just it. You know, we just sat there. My uncle word came after that, and then headed over. I didn't really think about that moment much. Just you know, it was so fun. And then uh, when my uncle Lee passed, my uncle uh, Leanne told me, and 
I really started to reflect on that moment. And I really started to think like, in that moment, you know, my Uncle Lee was really pulling for me. He was reaching for that memory for me. And I know how hard it was to see you barely free. And in that moment, I knew, like, man, my Uncle Lee really loves me. And I really loved him too. Thank you. This will be shorter than my walk up here. <laughs> Several of us, though, were Vietnam veterans, including uh, Mike Kelly, me, and uh, Leander. But we didn't tell war stories, we told peace stories. Online. This is for Leander and the family. I saw God. I saw God wash the world last night with his sweet showers on the And then when morning came, I saw him hang it all out to dry. He washed every tiny blade of grass and every trembling tree. He flung his showers against the hill and swept the billowing sea. The white rose is a clearer white, the black a perfect black, the red a brighter red. When God washed every fragrant, fragrant face and put them all to bed. If you take the prayer, prayer book, we turn to page 358. You stand, if you can, and say together the creed which summarizes our faith, the Nicene Creed. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, but through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, if you care to turn in the prayer book to page 497, and you can sit down, and I call on the Reverend uh, Q.B. Finley, um, the end pastor, to come say that have lead us in the prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. On behalf of Murphy Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, we would like to express to you, Sister Shirley, we will be here for you now and as time goes forward. Um, when we were pulling up, uh, I told my wife, I looked and I saw all those purple ties. I said, oh, the dog's going to bark today. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Um, as I read this and you hear me pause, if you can just say, hear us, O oh Lord. 
For our brother, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn and dry the tears of those who weep. Yes. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, comfort us in our sorrow. Yes. You raised the dead to life, give our brother eternal life. Yes. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Yes. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Yes. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let Oh God, by whose glorious resurrection of the, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life, grant that your servant the end, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And uh, after the feast, we shall have another, um, we'll have acknowledgement and, uh, and, and a family to the village. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Uh, and we have some acknowledgement with Miss uh, Kim Langton. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Kim Langston, my late husband, David Langston, and I was students of Mrs. Roberts. Mr. and Mrs. Roberts were not only supportive teachers in school, but were supportive friends to the entire Langston family. Mrs. Roberts, my heart is with you on this journey. I am here for you. I am honored to be here to support you on today and to read several acknowledgments and a resolution to the Langston, to the Roberts family. It's faith that lifts us up, love that brings us comfort, and a strength that allows us to move on. May you be touched by the healing power of prayer. Feel the warmth of those who love you and realize you have the courage to carry on. My thoughts and prayers are with you with deepest sympathies. Keep you, keeping you and your family in my thoughts and prayers during this very difficult time. Sisterly Pearl, Sawar, Barbara Cook, and family. His memory lives on and who he was and how he lived and who you are because of him. His love is with you still. Our hearts and prayers goes out to you and your family, Clifford and Marie Snyder. As you grieve the loss of your husband, love expressed is never lost. For God brings love to life. His hand creates the precious bond between a man and a wife. With grace, he shelters memories held deep within the heart to strengthen and to comfort them whenever they're apart. For God will call them home one day, eternity to gain, his arms outstretched to welcome one, to others to sustain. 
Praying God will comfort you and bless the memories your heart holds. With prayer and sympathy, Teresa Christopher Stevenson and family and Dr. Mel. A journey remembered. As some people journey through life, they leave footprints wherever they go. Footprints of kindness and love, courage and compassion, humor and inspiration, joy and faith. Even when they're gone, we can still look back and clearly see the trail they left behind. A trail bright with hope that invites us to follow. Shirley and Leanne family, praying you'll be comforted with precious memories and God's presence to care for you in your loss. With sympathy and love, praying that you are comforted knowing that Lee is resting in the presence of God. The Hodges, McCall, and the Gang families in the ways. Our thoughts are with you. Dear Sister Sawara friend, lean on your friends for support at this time. After all, that's what friendship is for. Look to sweet memories for comfort and peace when your pain is too big to ignore. Let yourself have the permission and time for whatever you may need to do. Meanwhile, please know many warm, caring thoughts are sent with compassion to you. Brad and I are with you and Leanne and our love and prayers. We have very fond memories of Lee. Brad and Elisa Qualls. On the loss of your husband, some men leave their mark on the world by the way they live and the difference they make in the lives of they, the people they touch. Let each tear that falls be a gentle reminder that you and your husband truly loved each other and made such a meaningful difference in each other's lives. No loss or sorrow or time or distance can ever take that away. In sympathy, sending healing prayers and comforting hugs to you and your family. We are so sorry for your loss, the Reynolds family. Here's a resolution from the Fair Oaks United Methodist Church. Condolence to the family of Lieutenant Colonel Leander Roberts Jr. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Second Corinthians 5 and 1. Again, a beautiful human spirit has taken its flight at the call of our Heavenly Father to the mansion prepared for him from the foundation of earth by all wise and loving God. Although it's difficult today to look beyond the sorrow, may looking back in memory help comfort you in the days to come. For to live on in our hearts left behind is not to die. Brother Leander lives on in the kindness he shared and the love he brought into your life. He is at peace with God now and rejoicing in his happy heavenly home. God's tomorrow is a beautiful peace where we'll be with Jesus and all our loved ones. And there shall be no more death, no nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelations 21 and 4. Pastor Carita Kane Rizal, the officers and members of the Fair Oaks United Methodist Church in Fair Oaks, wish to extend our heartfelt sympathy to his loving wife, Sister Shirley Ann Roberts, his beloved daughter, Sister Leanne Roberts Snyder, and the entire family, relatives, and friends of your passing loved one. Please know that we love you and sincerely care about you. Though his presence will be greatly missed, 
by you and others, we pray that you will accept the Christian submission to God's will and that you look forward with joy to meeting Brother Lieutenant Colonel Leander Roberts, Jr. in Glory Lane. Prayerfully submitted, Reverend Dr. Rita Kane Grizel, Sister Deidre Buchamp, or Buchamp Administrative Assistant. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Uh, but chiefly we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son jesus christ our lord for he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn Proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may sit. And just the message that they are coming forward to communion. We are distributing in bread only. If you are wish to receive, hold your hands up this way if you wish not to receive but want a blessing, across your hands from your chest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. When we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you and the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, They eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, because of my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and love your son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance. That Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. We thank you. You may go forward to receive communion. Thank you. 
turn to page 498 in the prayer book if you have it. Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty God, thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink, with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints and the elders. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord, that's what keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace of the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He must you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>